Are you a swag, camper trailer, hybrid or full on house on wheels kind of person? We have a really unique position here where we do have a camper trailer and a hybrid caravan behind us. We have used swags and we've had the house on wheels before. So let's talk about the pros and cons between camping in swags, campers, hybrids and your full on house on wheels caravans. Let's get into it. So if you're new to the channel, we are ambassadors for Conqueror Campers. We are in a unique position where we have the access to a camper trailer and a hybrid caravan. And uh, any new models coming down the road, we're really excited to get in and test. That gives us the perspective of using a camper and a hybrid back to back, which a lot of people don't get. And uh, I was thinking this morning, what a great idea it would be to talk about the differences between a camper and a hybrid camper. But let's take it a bit further. Let's go from a swag all the way through to a caravan. Um, look, everyone goes through that natural transition, I think. You start with a really cheap, crappy tent, usually before you even get a swag. Um, then you get the swag. Maybe you uh, get that soft floor camper trailer. We were lucky enough to skip that phase. Never was a fan. We did, however, end up with a hard floor camper trailer, which without the awnings, um, the awnings were always just a mess of poles. That actually wasn't too bad of a setup. We then moved on to a smaller hybrid caravan. Uh, and then full all the way through to a house on wheels being our titanium caravan uh, that we had about two years ago. Now we really have had the full spectrum from really cheap setups to super expensive setups and now we currently have a camper and a hybrid caravan. Okay so let's get into it we'll kick off with the first one which really does impact on a lot of people's purchase that's cost. So this isn't going to be as simple as, you know, the smaller package is always cheaper than the larger package because that is not the case, especially with the caravan and camper trailer market. High-end camper trailers can cost a lot of money and you can get some big old house on wheels secondhand for a really low cost. What you do have to think about though is that ongoing cost, that resale value, who it's relevant to, how easy is it to sell when you do get rid of it. Um, you can go into these purchases sometimes quite with quite an emotional look on it that you know you're going to keep it forever forever i have found is around five years so really think about when you buy something uh, being able to get out of it later on down the track obviously if it's a swag you're getting into you don't really have to think about resale selling a swag is probably like selling a used pair of undies i think i don't think it happens too often uh, so you know those purchases are ones you probably do have forever you buy a good swag there's probably no need to ever really upgrade your swag if you get a good one to start with Anything more than that, you do have to think about resale. Um, and you know, you, generally speaking on the new market, if you stay in a line, you know, the, a, a certain line of caravans or campers, um, especially with Conqueror, the smaller models are cheaper than their bigger models. Most brands will be like that. However, you can spec up a smaller model to be dearer than a larger van. So it's not always just cost. You know, smaller is cheaper, larger is dearer. So once you get your cost and your budget sorted, the next thing you really need to think about, I think it's the second most important thing, or maybe the most important thing, is the weight of what you're towing. Now the 490 behind us, I do really love that thing, and a lot of it's got to do with its size. Um, you know, 18 months, two years ago, we had the great big house on wheels, which was, you know, beautiful van, um, but you do, it does get tiring towing something that size around. The 490 behind a 79 series ute, yeah, you just don't even really know it's there. You just hammer down tracks, um, the, the van doesn't move the car around or anything like that. You do get a lot of confidence from towing something smaller. And uh, not only the ability of your vehicle, but you really need to think about the ability of yourself. Are you confident in towing a giant house on wheels around behind you? Or would you be more confident in towing something smaller that um, which when you get to camp, you feel relaxed, and uh, not everyone's stressed out and you haven't felt like you've overexerted yourself by towing something that you don't really have the experience to do. So size comes into it not only with the abilities of your vehicle, 
but the abilities of yourself. The other thing you really need to consider with size and weight like that is obviously your fuel costs. Uh, everything is getting more and more expensive in this day and age. Fuel is a big cost of travel. It's one of the major main costs. Food and things like that, you're gonna eat at home anyway, but if you're doing a thousand kilometers a day, which uh, it, it can be done when you're doing these bigger trips, you start to go through four to five hundred dollars worth of fuel a day, you'll understand the difference between, you know, four and five liters per hundred, and that's the difference between towing 1,500 kilos and three and a half ton. There could be a difference of 10 liters per hundred depending on the vehicle. So it is something also worth considering. And another reason why I do like the 490 over the 14. Um, and these aren't huge differences, but you know, four or 500 kilos, you do notice it in the vehicle. Right, oh, so you've got your budget, you've got the size and ability of the camper versus what you're towing it with and the ability of yourself. The other thing you've got to think about is the ease of living. Do you want to wear that, um, you know, hard on your sleeve, wear it as a, you know, a sign of being tough that you own a camper trailer. You don't need all those luxuries of a big van and toilet inside and air conditioning and shower inside. Do you just want a camper trailer or do you think you just want a camper trailer? I think there's a lot of people out there that say, ah, oh, you don't need that, you don't need that. But uh, in reality, when they go and use it, you know, husband and wife and kids or whoever your partner may be, if you both don't have that mindset, it becomes very stressful. It is more important to enjoy the camping experience than to be seen as a hardcore camper. If you're all about going to caravan parks and, and, and want the luxuries of being plugged into 240 power, all power to you. Not everyone's the same. Obviously, we're not into that. We do like free camping. However, however, Myself included, and especially Meigs, does enjoy the UEV 14, mainly because of the shower and toilet inside. And uh, I do enjoy it a little bit more when we get to camp late and you do need to set up. The 490 is, as far as camp trailers go, quite an easy setup, but there's still more setup than a 14 and you can't hide that. So the 14 does become easier to live with um, in a touring sense. So if you're doing lots of Ks, um, and, and big distances during the day to get to a destination, you pull up late of an afternoon, you do have the ability just to pop the roof, unfold the back, and you're done. There's no canvas, um, the awning's electric, it just goes straight out, pull the kitchen out, it, and as far as a hybrid caravan goes, that was one of the things that drew us towards that in the first place is, it's like a van that there's pretty well hardly any setup, but it is a bit smaller and makes it easier to tow and is cheaper to tow. So. In that respect, the hybrid wins for us as far as in a touring sense, and uh, we do really enjoy that. So the next thing you really need to think about is what kind of luxuries do you want and what kind of luxuries are you willing to live without? Obviously, your camper trailer setups are going to have less than most of your bigger setups, but that's not always the case. Some of these camper trailers are decked out with lithium, inverters. There is options in the 490 to have all that. Uh, there's probably the only limiting factor here is if you are really into your 12 volt and your inverter setups, you are going to run out of roof space on the roof of a camper or anything smaller for enough solar to really use induction cooktops, uh, kettles, toasters on a regular basis. You are going to have to think about that in your tow vehicle, about having an auxiliary power source or a backup power bank in the vehicle that you use to tow with. That's how we have always traveled, even with a bigger van, we had a lot of battery in the vehicle that charge, obviously while you're driving, you leave camp, you go for a drive, your batteries charge up, you get back, you can use those batteries in your vehicle to charge what you're towing without having the engine running and pissing off all the campers around you. If you're hell bent on running inverters, don't be that person that pulls up at camp and leaves the engine running to keep the batteries topped up. That's something you really need to think about in your setup and it comes back to the type of camper you are. And if you want that many luxuries to be able to run an air conditioner in your caravan off grid, I'm afraid you're probably a house on wheels kind of person. You're gonna want a thousand to 1500 watts of solar to do that confidently without any backup power supply in your vehicle. In saying that, all these things can be achieved if you're really clever with your setup in your vehicle, you can do it in a smaller package. So your hybrid's probably getting just big enough to be able to do that, to have a decent amount of solar on the roof, uh, plus with a bit of plug-in and then a bit of a setup in your vehicle as well. You can maintain that 12 volt power supply to run inverters, jugs, 
um, and your toaster of a morning. So running air conditioning off grid is still going to be an issue even in something at that size. To have that amount of solar you are going to be looking at your house on wheels and even then house on wheels with over a thousand watts of solar on the roof if you get a few cloudy days you're in strife. So the whole air conditioning off grid thing does need to be backed up with a auxiliary power supply in your tow vehicle. Another really big consideration into whether you need a swag, a camper, a hybrid or a house on wheels, what kind of trips do you do? Do you really want a really compact trailer to do those hardcore four wheel drive tracks that you see on YouTube? Or realistically, is the UEV 14 gonna be more comfortable for the whole family? Uh, because you know you're really not gonna do those. It's a bit of a pipe dream. You really need to be honest with yourself because it is a big purchase and you need to get the right thing for the whole family, not just for that dream trip that you're probably never gonna do. On the flip side of this, maybe you wanted the luxuries of the UEV 14 and something that size, but you really should have been in the 490 because you do do those hardcore trips and those four-wheel drive tracks and you end up bashing the 14 up too much because you're getting it down these tight tracks and into those situations. Come back, come back. Oh, I don't know with the van. I don't think. No, no. Well, the only other option is to turn around. <laughs> this is not going to be fun. <sighs> that is quite fun, but you might be better off staying with a more of a camper trailer based trailer. Right, the next thing you need to think about is how big is your family and how much stuff or crap do you take with you when you go camping? Some people take so much stuff when they go camping. Then you're gonna be wanting something a bit bigger like the 14. The 14 also has two fridges so you can have more cold food, it has more storage in general and sleeps five inside. You could look at the 490 and say, this is basically a utility trailer. You chuck a couple of swags inside it. Then all of a sudden you're sleeping six, two people outside under the awning. That's the style of camper you are. But how many people do you want to sleep inside? How much stuff do you want to take? How many fridges do you want inside the camper? They do offer two totally different things and two different packages. So that's another really big consideration you need to think about. Righto, so this whole episode has been about using your camper, caravan, swag, or house on wheels. Now what happens when you get home? Where are you gonna put it? Can you put it under cover? Do you have enough off street parking? Are you happy to leave it on the street? Uh, do you have a certain amount of space off street that if you bought something bigger, you'd have to leave it on the street? There's so many considerations with this. It affects your insurance. It affects whether you want it under cover or not. Really um, with hailstorms and things like that. There's a lot of things to think about and uh, when you're spending so much money on something, it is a real consideration with how you're willing to store something. And look, some people are happy to leave the house on wheels out on the street. Some people are happy to leave their camper trailer out on the street. But you need to be happy with the decision and think about where you're going to store it when you get home. Right, uh, it's the end now and uh, what I need to do is tell you guys what my favourite is. Like I said, we've gone swags, hard floor campers, hybrids, to a full-on house on wheels and uh, everything in between. And now we have back-to-back -back use of a camper and a hybrid caravan. It's the hybrid caravan for me. I think that is a perfect compromise between storage, size, weight, towing ability, and all those things put together. Shower and toilet inside. There's just enough room inside to escape if there's shitty weather. Uh, I think it's just a good compromise of all those things put together. We've been doing this for years and years now and I really think that is the size caravan or camper you want for me. Something that blurs the lines. Plenty of fridge space, plenty of 12 volt power. And uh, yeah, that's that's my pick. The shower and toilet inside, Meg's loves. And um, I'd love to say I'm a hardcore camper and I just love the 490 that I would not own that. But uh, I have the ability to be able to use them back to back and I still enjoy and love using the 490 does give you that more camping feel especially in that front bed uh, but if I had to pick one it'd be the 14 for me comment below what you guys do what do you think we should all be doing are we all mad should we all just be back in swags back in the dark ages and just uh, live in basic and look I think you need that balance in life too. take it right back to basics or are you a house on wheels kind of person get to a caravan park and plug in power which one would you have, the 490 or the 14? Don't forget, you only live once. Get out there and enjoy it in whatever you've got.